next off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of The Visitor from Outer Space. Of all the many dangers involved in space navigation, one of the worst is uncharted asteroids. These deadly missiles from outer space can destroy even the largest cargo ship. Therefore, it is of the utmost importance that they be charted upon the space charts of the solar system. Its inner's all right, five miles thick and nearly 15 miles long. Its true course has never been plotted. Didn't it nearly collide with her once, Professor? It came dangerously close once. That was in 1931. It seems to be on a new orbit now. Don't all asteroids follow a fixed orbit? Not Eros. No one has been able to chart her accurately. It's almost as though she has a mind of her own. Don't most women? I have a theory about the erratic behavior of Eros. What's that, Professor? If I'm not mistaken, that asteroid has a small gravity field. This could account for her change in course. Makes sense, Skipper. Why, yes. If Eros passed a planet like Earth in her orbit, she'd be slightly attracted. She seems to have a life all her own. And amazingly enough, Eros is growing. And that I don't understand. Scott, based on this information, how about going out and charting her new course? We should be able to intercept it in the area of the Van Allen belt. We'll blast off immediately. Clear the tube for blast off. Strapped in, gang? Go here. Aye, Skipper. Launch control. We're ready for countdown. Roger, Starduster. Control ready and counting. Reactors, go. Umbilical, go. Cabin pressure, go. Tube doors opening. Angle of blast, two, three, zero. Vector four. Correcting angle. Trajectory, go. AB temperature, go. Increasing power. Perfect. Acceleration 15 units. Okay, kids, on your stations and let's see if we can find that frisky asteroid. Scott, the evening star is trying to contact us on channel 37. You're right, Chris. Starduster here. What's up, Professor Mace? Scott, there are heavy sunspot eruptions taking place. That means increased radiation in the Van Allen belts. Watch the radiation count closely. You may have to change your point of rendezvous with Eros. Don't see how we can, Professor. If your theory is right, Eros will change course when it reaches the Van Allen belt. We'll have to pick it up on the other side or take the chance of missing completely. Well, don't risk your life going through that belt. If the radiation gets too hot, turn back. Okay, Professor, we'll be careful. Starduster out. Evening star out. We are approaching the outer belt now, Skipper. Chris, how much radiation? 4.4. Not much higher than usual. We'll be through it before we can do any harm. What's the danger point, Skipper? 10 even. If we're exposed too long. Give us a rating, Chris. 9.3 in rising. 9.4. 9.5. How about it, Skipper? Brace yourselves, kids. We're blasting out of here. It's 9.9. .9. Something's wrong. Cosmic disturbance dead ahead, Skipper. 10 and still rising, Scott. The Starduster is being exposed to extremely dangerous radioactivity. What will happen to Scott and his friends? Don't miss the next exciting episode of Space Angel.
Blast off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of The Visitor from Outer Space. Last time, Scott, Taurus, and Crystal blasted off, heading for the asteroid Eros in order to chart its course. As they flew through the Van Allen radiation belt, the Starduster was exposed to extremely dangerous radioactivity. Give us a radiation reading, Chris. 11.3 and still rising. We can't ride through this much longer. There's a call signal. Must be Professor Mace. Starduster here. Come in, Professor. What's wrong out there, Scott? My tracking instruments record high radiation. They read right. Our radiation reading is over maximum safety limits. What is your reading at the moment? Reading, Chris. 12, even. Still going up. That's bad business, Scott. Don't take any chances. Get into the radiation chamber and ride this out. The sunspots must have created a solar storm. Those are solar flare particles we're dealing with. Roger, Professor. Out here. I'm setting the Starduster on automatic. Everybody into the radiation chamber. Well, how about Eros, Skipper? Aren't we getting close? Can't worry about that. We've already been dangerously exposed to radiation. Well, come on, Slowpokes. You're just asking for trouble. We're safe here. Radiation factor reads negative. Hard to believe she's sizzling outside. All we've got to worry about is the possibility of meeting heroes head on. We'll never know it, Skipper. Not in here. Now that's a nice cheery little thought. Our velocity was 1,000 space units. At that rate of speed, we should be able to pass through this stuff in another five units. With Eros closing on us, that's a mighty long time, Skipper. Right. The ARI will tell us when it's safe to leave this chamber. What's the matter, lass? You look all in. I don't know what's the matter. Oh, I feel so drowsy. Oh, that's a woman for you, Skipper. Right in the middle of... They fall asleep. Who must be catching? There's something wrong here. Uh, it's beginning to affect me. It's got the oxygen. Can't be right. Oxygen is normal. Uh, but something's definitely wrong. I must stay awake. Evening star to Starduster. Evening star to Starduster. Come in, Scott. Come in, Scott. They're in the radiation chamber. But surely Scott would switch on the auxiliary speaker in there. Evening star to Starduster. Come in, Scott. Come in, Scott. Scott, Crystal. Crystal, are you all right? What's happened? Uh, oxygen okay, but I just can't figure this out. Why, why we can't breathe. Our CO2 converter system. The circulator's out. Warning lamp failed us. We're breathing our own exhale. We could have suffocated. Skipper, what happened? We were asleep. Hold it, Scott. Listen. Our converter fan was off. In free fall, our breath just hung around us. It had no place to go. Evening star calling Starduster. Scott, Crystal, come in, please. Calling Scott McCloud. Come in, please. This is Professor Mace. Professor Mace. Sorry for the delay. Had a little trouble here. Okay, now. Scott, I can't locate Eros. Terrible interference. Was she still on course when you lost contact? Yes, but that was some time ago. You better work fast. We're approaching rendezvous. Taurus, check environment. Aye, Skipper. Outside radiation approaching normal, Skipper. Good. Let's get back to our stations. Now remember, Taurus, we just want to find Eros. We don't want to hit it. I got you, Skipper. But I can't see anything out there anywhere but space. Has Eros changed course again? If so, where is it headed this time? Don't miss the next exciting episode of Space Angel.
Blast off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of The Visitor from Outer Space. Last time, Scott, Taurus, and Crystal, on their way to chart the course of the asteroid Eros, were exposed to extremely dangerous radiation. While they were in the deradiation chamber of the Starduster, Professor Mace reported that he had lost radar contact with the asteroid. Still not a thing, Skipper. Chris? Negative. I've scanned the whole sector and she's simply not around. I can't understand it. Eros has to be somewhere in the vicinity of Earth. That asteroid is awfully fickle, Skipper. Maybe she decided to visit Mars instead. Hold it, Taurus. Here's Professor Mace. Come in, Professor. I picked her up, Scott. Eros is in orbit around the moon. When she hit that cosmic storm, she must have been deflected on a tangent. No wonder we couldn't find her. The Earth was blocking our scanner. Circle in the moon, eh? See, Skipper, I told you she was fickle. Eros is in a tight elliptical orbit and very unstable. She's a real menace to space traffic in that area, Scott. We'll get right over there, Professor. Out here. Moon dead ahead, Skipper. No coming into view. No Eros, though. Probably around the back. There she comes now. The professor wasn't kidding. That asteroid is in a tight orbit. Now that's the darndest thing I've ever seen, Skipper. Her orbital pattern changes each time around. What do you think, lad? One thing for sure, Taurus. It's blocking every approach to the moon. A pilot would be out of his mind if he tried to land on it. Know what I think, Skipper? Charting that crazy asteroid is a waste of time. You're right. Chris, get me Professor Mace. Yes, Scott, right away. That's right, Professor. Eros cannot be charted. Then we really have no choice, Scott. We've got to get rid of her. I read you, Professor. Out here. Well, you heard the Professor. We're going to have to get rid of Eros. Good idea, Skipper. But first, we've got to catch her. Then hang on, gang. The fireworks are about to start. Chris. 300 Astro League, Scott. And closing in fast, Skipper. There goes Eros. She's holding pretty steady now. Stand by. I'm going to try to match her course and speed. Eros, dead ahead, Skipper. Eros is erupting. Volcanic blasts. Hang on. Emergency. Full speed. All engines. Where's Eros? She is headed for the moon. Holy cow, it's bounced off. Hang on. Eros has a new course. Good heaven, she's headed towards Earth. Oh, no. We've got to stop it. A wild asteroid plunging through space. Can Scott prevent Eros from colliding with Earth? Don't miss the next exciting episode of Space Angel.
for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of The Visitor from Outer Space. Last time, Scott, Taurus, and Crystal had located the erratic asteroid in orbit around the moon. It was decided that Eros could not be charted and was a real menace to space traffic, so it must be destroyed. As they closed in on the asteroid, Eros erupted and changing course, headed straight for Earth. We're gaining on that wild asteroid. Uh oh, there go those blasted jets again, Skipper. She's changing course, Scott. Almost 45 degrees. Chris, get me Professor Mace. That asteroid's now gone completely wild. Right, Scott. Stardust are calling the evening star. That's it, Professor. No telling what heroes will do next. We've got a volcanic asteroid on our hands. That's very serious, Scott. Those blasts coming from Eros could force her into one of the planets, maybe hit a city. Scott, Eros is changing course again. Good golly, she's going into Vector 6, headed directly for the evening star. Professor Mace, Eros is now heading for the evening star. I know, Scott. My radar scope's warning system is at work. She's getting awfully close, son. Professor Mace, are you all right? Come in, please. Are you all right, Professor? Come in. Good grief, there she is. Look at that. What a mess. Dad has to be okay. He has to be. Hold it. I think this is the Professor. He's coming in on audio. Hello, Starduster. This is Evening Star. He's on the emergency frequency. This is Professor Mace. Come in, Scott. It's Dad. Oh, thank heavens. Go ahead, Professor. I'm okay. Eros just brushed us. The evening star was shaken up a bit. Oh, we'll be okay, Scott. We're repairing the damage now. You get that asteroid before she does any more damage. Will do, Professor. Out here. Lined up, Skipper. Stand by to drop thermal package. Chris, open hatch. Right, Scott. Hatch open. She's down, lad. this as quick as possible. As soon as I activate that firecracker, I'll get out for you, Rose. We'll rendezvous as planned. Be careful, Scott. Watch out for that asteroid, Skipper. She's tricky. Stand by to launch space stop. About to arm bomb. Hurry, Skipper. That asteroid can change course at any time. There. She's activated. Taurus, I'm ready to head back. Stand by her. She's beginning to erupt again, Skipper. Get off! Get off! Jumper, jumper. Space dark's gone. He's stranded, Chris. Scott can't get off Eros. Oh no, Scott trapped on a volcanic asteroid. Can he be rescued before the thermal bomb explodes? Don't miss the next exciting episode of Space Angel.
Blast off for another exciting adventure in outer space with Scott McCloud, Space Angel, in the story of The Visitor from Outer Space. Last time, you remember the decision was made to destroy the wild asteroid Eros. Scott landed in a space dart and activated the thermal bomb. Just at that moment, Eros erupted and the space dart was demolished, leaving Scott stranded. Skipper, are you okay? Come in, lad. All right for the moment, Torres. Things are getting rough. Stand by, lad. We're coming for you. No, no, you old bull. No sense all of us getting it. Stay out of here. That's an order. Skipper, this is one time I'm glad to disobey an order. Now, if we don't make it in time, you can court-martial me. Lower the bosun's chair, Chris. Right, Torres. Before that bomb goes off. Okay, here, Torres. Go ahead. Got you, Skipper. Hang on. Easy does it, Chris. He's indicating his transmitters out, Chris. Prepare to pick him up. Stand by, the skipper's A-OK. -okay. There's Eros now, heading right for the sun. She's gone, Scott. What she could have done to space navigation. A real temperamental little gal, Skipper. A devil of a gal, if you ask me. Hey, I've got an idea. Why don't we take a short cruise around the planet Cambria? Now, if that isn't a silly idea, it would take us weeks. Any particular reason, you old bull? Well, after that collision Eros had with the Evening Star, there's an awful lot of work waiting for us when we get back. I was kind of hoping we'd miss it. <laughs> and so ends the story of The Visitor from Outer Space. Don't miss the next exciting adventure with Scott McCloud, Space Angel.